Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 30th, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. I mean, this is a week that a lot of people have been talking about and looking forward to, and that is because it is the beginning of eclipse season, starting right around Tuesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. With the solar eclipse, we will welcome in two weeks of eclipse season that will end with a lunar eclipse in the middle of the month. Now, of course, I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way, but for this week, this solar eclipse is a powerful one and an important one as well. It is this eclipse that will bring in a set of circumstances, new opportunities, new people, that will be part of bringing in greater inspiration as well. And I would even say that this eclipse has a certain magical quality to it. And that's because this eclipse taking place in the sign of Cancer will also be speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune in a type of conversation that astrologers call a trine. It is this beautiful trine formation that says there will be easy blessings and faith available to us. And it is in our faith when we find our foundation, we find our security in that, that we will then be able to go out into the world, go out into embracing greater opportunities for our lives. Now, eclipses to me are so important. They are powerfully karmic because they intimately involve the nodes. And when it is that the nodes are activated, the nodes of the moon, that is, it is as if a doorway opens. And when it is a solar eclipse intimately involving the north node of the moon, it is a doorway that opens, but it brings in new people, new opportunities, and karmic blessings. I like to envision it as being pulled in the direction of greater love and greater wisdom through the doorway of the node that just opens very wide at the eclipse. And so this solar eclipse, speaking in supreme harmony with Neptune, adds that sense of faith, adds that sense of inspiration to what could be new and next for us. But we also have Saturn standing across the sky from this solar eclipse. And that is an interesting dynamic because on the one hand with Neptune, it's all inspiration and hope. Now with Saturn, the great thing is, is that Saturn will allow us and will allow you to ground the energy, to take what otherwise would just be a dream and have it translate into practical opportunity, into a changed lived experience. However, it's an opposition. It is Saturn across the sky from this eclipse. And this to me is an interesting dynamic because as much as the solar eclipse in the sign of Cancer is saying, find home within yourself and doorways will open. Trust your past and where you have been and you will find your way forward. And know that there is wisdom of your ancestors, wisdom of forgiveness, and wisdom of where you have been that you can carry over into this moment to bless your life. But the way in which we're going to become aware of these blessings, these karmic blessings, may come about through a moment that might not necessarily feel so comfortable. And I'm sorry to say that, but Again, it is part of the wisdom. When we attract these experiences that provoke strong feeling within us, it invites us to see some truth, truth about a situation, but really it's a truth about ourselves. And it is Saturn standing across the sky from this eclipse that speaks to a sense of an external restricting force. Uh, perhaps you feel as if someone else is trying to be the boss of you when they're not really the boss of you. Um, or someone else is trying to place limits where you are ready and feeling open to soar. This can also be an awareness of responsibility that doesn't always feel good and a need to be mindful of the ethics of where you are and what is the right thing to do. That can be tricky. 
figuring out exactly what it is that's gonna get you to that more inspired, blessed place, but also trusting what doesn't feel so comfortable, trusting that it is actually part of what is gonna get you there. And so I said, as part of the mystery, right, we will attract all kinds of experiences, all kinds of exchanges from our very small moments uh, to the big ones as well. And it is in those small moments when we are, whether we're asked a tough question or asked to do something and we're not sure how we feel about it, or we're really sure we don't really like it, but we wonder what the consequences will be if we don't go along with it. It's these moments that ultimately are truth revealing. They show us where we are in terms of all kinds of things, in terms of our self-trust, in terms of our inner strength, in terms of our priorities, in terms of our perspective. They invite us to get more honest with ourselves about where we are in our lives and why and how we feel about it. But the thing is that this is also an energy that asks for balance and some compromise as well. Now, sometimes that compromise is within yourself. You wanna be a millionaire, but right now, circumstances are such that you're not even at the poverty line you're below the poverty line that's okay you can see that sense of where you want to go you can see how some opportunity could allow you to get you there you want a life that feels that you're more in alignment with life purpose well that's great but it is this alignment that's going to show you something about what sacrifice could be involved in that that's going to get you there and will ask you if you're willing to make that sacrifice and how you really feel about it. A lot of times, the greatest sacrifice that we will give is just putting in the time, taking it one day at a time, one moment at a time, and putting in the time that will get us to a place where we know that we are confident that we have done the work to have trust that we have the skills to bring forward in the moment that we need. And a lot of times those skills and that confidence happens because we've proven it to ourselves again and again. We've done it so many times. And that's what I mean by putting in the time. A lot of times it does happen that we want some big break, some big lucky streak, some boon. And sometimes the universe does grant us that. And with this eclipse, there is that sense of magic and, and possibility, that sense of touching on a miracle, which is great. But at the same time with Saturn, Saturn is saying that you have to have done the background work. You have to have already put in the time to have that big break, or at least, yes, a magical, beautiful break, a sense of progress, a sense of moving forward, a sense of moving towards a dream come true can transpire for you, but it will possibly be in proportion to the amount of time that you've already put in. Now that can be very subjective, right? Time isn't just doing something again and again. Time isn't necessarily just, you know, continuing to hammer the same nail, expecting it to move when it just isn't moving. Sometimes the time is about the inner preparation, the soul work, the work it takes to be honest with yourself about which nail is worth taking your very valuable hammer to. That is a huge part of putting in the time of earning whatever change, whatever progress, whatever momentum, whatever positive step shows up for you now. My hope is for all of us with so much change in the air, but also so much wisdom in the air that we're able to recognize it quickly for the blessing it is and enjoy it. But I think we will. I think we'll get there very quickly. And that is because a day after the eclipse, Venus moves into the same part of the sky. And it is going to be towards the very end of next week that Venus will cross over the eclipse point will be at the same spot that the eclipse is happening this week. And that means love, love showing up, uh, blessings and awareness of how it is that the universe wants you to know that you can enter an energy of ease and flow and still be tremendously productive, still be useful. You can enjoy the journey that is going to get you to the goals that you have, to the possibilities, to the breakthroughs that you are hoping for. 
And wherever it is that love is, your love, your care, your attention, well, that is where some of the greatest miracles become possible now. We might have to face some fears as part of what new shows up for us, but we can very quickly transcend it. But not only that, enjoy the ride. Now, also notable this week is Mars. Mars is at the very beginning of the week going to change signs, moving into the sign of Leo for the next month and a half. Now, this is notable for a few reasons. The first reason is that as Mars changes signs, we'll cross over the eclipse point of January 21st, so going way back. Now, this may sound a little familiar because it was last week that Mercury crossed over that eclipse point as well. Now, it is going to be Mercury that will uh, eventually go retrograde, okay? Um, and that is going to happen next week, actually, at the beginning of next week. So we're almost there, but we are in a Mercury retrograde season, meaning that this is where Mercury is going to walk back. And so last week, Mercury in shadow, this week, Mercury in shadow. Next week, Mercury will go retrograde, and in mid-July and in mid-August, we'll move over that eclipse point, so for a total of three times. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring awareness, it's going to bring understanding, it's going to bring intellect into the mix. And intellect is an interesting energy because it is uh, characterized by being detached, right? It's a little bit removed. It's not so emotionally entangled. Instead, it can see things more clearly, more rationally. And it is Mercury ultimately that's going to help us to understand what that eclipse way back in January, not only what that was meant to be for us, but how to continue that conversation, how to move it forward, uh, how to understand more deeply the changes that we went through, not only in January, but for the previous two years as we had eclipses in the sign of Leo and in its opposite sign of Aquarius. So yes, we have Mercury, we've had Mercury, we will have Mercury again. But Mars is a very different energy. Mars is not like Mercury. Mars is very embodied. It's very passionate. It's about adrenaline. It's about trusting your gut and what you feel and going with the emotional sense of drive. Mars can be impulsive. Mars can feel things intently and deeply. And where it is that last week it might have felt like a connection or information, now here comes how you really feel about the situation, how you really feel about what took place in January, how you truly feel deep within you in your passions being stirred about what 2017 and 2018 were meant to teach you. This is going to bring with it a flush of excitement for some, frustration for others, but regardless of how it is that you experience this moment, know that beyond just the immediate reaction, there is a truth. There is a truth that you understand deep within that you can feel, even if you can't intellectualize it just yet. And it is that truth ultimately that will help you to make the most of what has transpired January and before and the journey that you continue on now. I would also add though, it is important, don't judge yourself if you do end up, you know, bringing forward a more impulsive energy. I mean, of course, we wanna evaluate our behavior, learn from our behavior and our reactions. It's always good because that way we can ensure that we are acting in a way and from a place that feels uh, like it is consciously chosen, like it is an authentic expression, not that we are on automatic, but we're human. It's gonna happen, we're gonna have reactions sometimes. And for some people, this reaction may actually be very pleasant, very passionate, um, but for others still, it might be uncomfortable, right? It might be that sense of your frustration or the things that you haven't allowed yourself to feel angry about that can come forward now regardless of what it is that does transpire for you. I hope that you will be kind and patient with yourself, knowing that this is part of ultimately the buildup to the eclipse, right? Because this is happening right around Sunday that Mars will change signs. And so it is gonna be right around Tuesday that the eclipse occurs. Both of these very karmic, strong karmic indications here. 
with Mars activating the eclipse point of January, but an actual solar eclipse taking place right now. So we are, as we start this week, becoming aware of karmic patterns and of karmic blessings as well. Now, sometimes those blessings are about the new and the next. That's the solar eclipse. But sometimes blessings are intimately tied in where it is that healthy closure can be had or is ready to be had. Now that is what Mars moving over the eclipse point is going to help us do to find that healthy closure for what probably already closed a while back, but now we get to appreciate it on a deeper level of soul and of heart. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it's got to be the eclipse, right? What else could it be? Now, this powerful eclipse is taking place in the sign of cancer. This is a sign that represents matters of home in terms of where you live and how you feel about it, who you share your home with. Uh, it has to do with buying, selling, moving, new roommates, or the roommates that you already have. And it is this part of the sky that is also connected to our family of origin, our parents in particular. How do we feel about those relationships, those alliances, those experiences? Do we feel like we were well parented or not? And where is it now that we are ready to parent our own inner child, to take over, to now be responsible for ourselves and to give ourselves what it is that we truly need? And also, this is the part of the sky that has to do with the ancestors, the, the sacred ground on which we stand and the people who came before. All of us, no matter uh, who you are, uh, what you believe your origins to be, what you believe your ancestry to be, you are here as a result of love. And you are, whoever you are, you are standing on very broad shoulders that are built with love, that hold you up with this spirit of hope and belief that great things are possible for you. That is the love of the earth and that is the love of the ancestors. It is this eclipse in the sign of cancer now that is going to ask us to understand more deeply where it is that we truly belong, whom it is that we find family with, whom are those that we are most familiar with, that we feel we share roots with? It's not always a physical thing. It's often a spiritual thing, an emotional thing. It is an intellectual thing as well, right? Anytime you find yourself resonating with a school of thought, a system of philosophy, you are participating in an intellectual legacy, an intellectual ancestry that you have now become a part of. Anytime it is that you meet somebody and you feel at home with this person, it is because you are home. You are home with them in acceptance and in love. And this eclipse is going to invite us, boldly invite us, along with Venus, to contemplate the true root of the love that we have, the love that we feel, and the love that we give. And of all those three, right, have receive and give. It is the giving that matters most. It is Eckhart Tolle who said, you know, I heard him say this in a, on a webcast and this phrase really to this day, it has held me. It has been a guiding philosophy. And that phrase is give whatever it is that you feel the universe is holding from you. Wherever it is that you feel the universe is withholding from you, whatever that may be, love, companionship, prosperity, opportunity, whatever that may be, give that to another. Give it freely. And that is one way to powerfully shift the energy. Well, it is this eclipse that will invite you to consider what it is that you have, what it is that you receive, but more importantly, what it is you give. And as you give, so shall you receive. And it is this beautiful eclipse along with Venus that's going to remind us to give love, to receive love, and celebrate the love not only all around us, but within us as well. Well, thank you so much for watching. I absolutely appreciate it. I value you, every single one of you watching live on the premiere or in the replay. Thank you. Please let me know in the comments below. 
I love reading you guys. What do you love about this week? How are you feeling about the eclipse? How are you excited about the eclipse? Uh, monthly horoscopes are gonna be available to superstars at the start of this week. They will be available, though. they're just about done. There's some editing that needs to happen and uh, I'm sorry about that superstars, but superstars always get 24 hour early access to the monthly horoscope. So that's gonna happen Sunday and then Monday, uh, they will be posted uh, for YouTube, my friends and fans on YouTube. So I hope you absolutely enjoy them where I do dive into the eclipses, not only the solar eclipse, but the lunar eclipse for each and every sign. Of course, if you can't wait that long, you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign. You want to deep dive into this week? Well, you can log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more all of this in the superstar space i look forward to meeting you there i have classes coming up i can't believe it's going to be this coming weekend this coming weekend summer school of synchronicity university begins the first class that i will be teaching is childhood in the astrology chart that's going to be a lot of fun to dive into and we've got so many more classes as well we are going to be looking at further thoughts on forgiveness the midheaven the part of fortune astrological magic uh, and a q a so it's a six week course and i know that a lot of people can't join us live that really is okay uh, you will get a download that you can learn from infinitely and now there's also a Facebook group as well for uh, those enrolled in summer schools. You can talk about the lessons and the learning uh, and we can interact with each other. And that's been a lot of fun to join the first people who have joined that group and the Facebook page and the Instagram page as well. Thank you to each and every one of you. So I'm really excited about this class coming up this coming Saturday. The first Saturday in July is when summer school begins. And I look forward to meeting you online. And of course, in-person events I have coming up, uh, constantly in conversations about upcoming events, but there are some I wanna note. One of course is this Labor Day weekend, I am going to be in Baltimore as part of the NCGR conference in January, 2020. I'm going to be part of a cruise event with seven world-renowned astrologers, and we are going to be leaving from Fort Lauderdale as part of a transformational healing journey. Uh, one of these journeys that I hope will stay with you long after uh, this journey, this trip, this cruise is over. Uh, we'll be leaving from Fort Lauderdale, but we will be docking in, I know in Mexico, Honduras, and Belize. That'll be a lot of fun too, and there are sacred sites and uh, meditations that'll happen every day and all kinds of wonderful things that we are continuing to put together but yeah there is a schedule and there are seminars and it is ultimately about being a part of this group karmically drawn together to share this experience that I believe and I hope will change us all this cruise will happen under the light of the Pluto Saturn conjunction that I have spoken about already but I will speak about a lot more especially as we move towards 2020. And I hope that it is going to be one of those moments where we're able to harness that power of change and of truth and become a force of healing in our own lives and lives of the people around us. That is the intention of this cruise, for it to change you in some way so that you go back to your life, to your home better and able to be a force of transformation in the lives of others. And 2020, other events that I have coming up, I'm just giving you a quick heads up. In May, I'm going to be in Toronto with Astrology Toronto. And in September, I'm going to be in Colorado with the ESAR conference. So there's so much to look forward to here, more events being added constantly. Um, and so we're going to have a continue to have a lot of learning together, uh, continuing to explore astrology together and continuing to have fun. And I hope that too. I think fun is very healing as well. Fun inspires hope. Fun inspires joy. And so yes, whenever I do a talk or a live event, we enjoy ourselves fully. We laugh. You get to see maybe a little bit of a different side than you might necessarily always see in the videos. Uh, but I've been told it's refreshing 
so you'll be refreshed in my company as well. But I love meeting friends and fans in person, so I look forward to meeting you at one of the live events and, of course, the online events with Synchronicity University and other avenues. Love to meet you online as well. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you just for being my friend, my fan, my superstar, uh, for being a part of the immense blessings that I get to experience every single day because of my audience, because of you. I am so very grateful for you. Thank you. And thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.